Thanks for joining us on Nationwide today. I am Elizabeth Omori with the news. Niger's quest to be on the medals table in the ongoing 2020 Olympics Games yielded positive results as SA Brome emerged third best in the long jump event to win Niger's first laurel. Sports correspondent Femi Johnson reports that she jumped 6.97 meters to raise millions of Nigerians home and abroad hope of returning home with a medal. Germany's Mihabo won the gold medal, U.S. Reese emerged silver medalist. Meanwhile, Nigeria will top it up with a gold or silver medal today when blessing Oborododo fight for supremacy in the finals of 68 kg women category against United States in the wrestling events. And out to health. Absence of resident doctors in hospitals has affected several booked medical appointments and rendered most patients helpless as a limited consultants can only attend to few sick people. At the University of Oyo Teaching Hospital, it was observed that some inpatients were discharged while outpatients waited longer than necessary to see a consultant. Ifamai Hoji reports. The ongoing industrial action by the National Association of Resident Doctors has left some Nigerians in that situation. I have to plead, plead with the nurses before my father was brought out here, so it's really affecting us. While the clinics at the University of Uyo Teaching Hospital are still running skeletal services, the chief medical director says the strike has mounted pressure on the limited consultants. It's very tough because um, these same resident doctors across the country are the ones manning most of the isolation centers and also manning most of the accident and emergency units together with the medical officers who of course always join them on strike so it's for me i wish they did not have to for the national association of resident doctors their demands have remained the same but for the issue of the removal of house officers from the scheme of service which is currently on there was the agreement that was signed a memorandum of actions and there were some timelines that were given so that uh, our demands could be uh, executed. But so as this may um, up to today, a lot of those things, a lot of our demands have not been made. Nigerians are calling on the federal government and of course members of the Resident Doctors Association of Nigeria to meet at a middle ground to ensure that this strike action does not last longer than necessary. From the University of Uyo Teaching Hospital, Uyo Akwaibom State, Ifoma Aihuchi, NTNS. Patients seeking medical attention in public hospitals may have to contend with difficult times following the indefinite strike and backed upon by the National Association of Resident Doctors. Elias Itiavu went round some government hospitals in Makadi, the Benue State Capital, reports that only emergency services are being rendered as a result of the strike. This is the premises of the Federal Medical Center Makudi. Only a few people could be seen as compared to the normal days where the facility could be crowded. The Bernard State University Teaching Hospital premises is not different as only a sizable number of patients are receiving medical attention. The commencement of the industrial action by the National Association of Resident Doctors has forced patients to be attended to only by consultant doctors. The Medical Residency Training Fund should be paid to all residents as a minimum criteria before uh, this strike will be called on. For the hospital management, measures have been put in place to provide emergency services for patients while the strike lasts. The consultants are going around the wards and reviewing the patients. The aim of this is that if the patients are stable enough that can be discharged home, 
they need to be discharged from. With resident doctors constituting a larger percentage of medical doctors in public institutions, the worry on the minds of many Nigerians is how soon could this impasse be resolved for full medical activities to resume in our public health institutions? In Makudi, Elias, ATR, NTNews. Towards having a functional and effective health care service delivery in the country, the Nigerian Medical Association and the Association of Resident Doctors are calling on government to provide standard infrastructure facilities and ensure their allowances are paid to bring to an end the nationwide strike. Sarafina Okun Umekwe has an update on this report. We need to work and improve on the primary health care system top's agenda as Nigerian Medical Association holds its annual general meeting amidst nationwide strike embarked upon by resident doctors. Dr. Roland Aigbovo, who is the immediate past president, Association of Resident Doctors, FCT chapter, and the Treasurer of Nigerian Medical Association say the timeline given to government has not been met towards improving the Nigerian health care system. I believe that uh, though we know we have a very precarious situation in the health industry and the Health sector, particularly with the system, and uh, with the uh, coming of COVID, a lot of the lapses were exposed. And uh, trying to grapple with that reality on ground that okay, we need to work on the health system to improve the health system because it's not all about having a health system that cannot meet the yearnings of the people. We realize that um, in the FCT, so many people are unable to afford, surely those who are in the lower. Um, 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 social strata, they are unable to afford the kind of health care and the, the primary health care system, which should be what they should get to, um, is not as functional as we would want it to be for obvious reasons. Um, one is infrastructural decay, which is um, more like what happens everywhere, and then also have a um, lack of manpower. The chairman of Nigerian Medical Association, FCT, Enema Amodu, says government is not working the talk on the previous strike suspended as issues that have been on the front burner have not been attended to on the review of hazard allowances and so hard on the needs to strengthen primary health care system. We are not very insensitive. We are not oblivious of the fact that uh, the economy is in a crunch. But we would like government to really walk the talk. If after uh, agreements we sit down and we are clearly uh, marked our demands and they said yes we'll do this, this, this and this. Anti New School visited the National Hospital Abuja where this patient Binta says she was unattended to. How can we come to the hospital on an appointment and not see a doctor? We are not really okay with what is happening with the healthcare system in Nigeria. The resident doctors say once the minimum requirements are met, the strike will be called off. Serafina Okun Umikwe, NTA News. To other health-related matters, experts in health and nutrition say breast milk works in the prevention of infant mortality. It is in this regard Basi Taikban reports on its importance as this year's Breastfeeding Week begins with the theme Protect Breastfeeding a Shared Responsibility. Said it's a super vaccine, it's a super food, it's also a smart investment. It is good, good milk. It is the best food for a baby. That sets the tone for this year's breastfeeding week with reference to Article 24 of the Convention on the Rights of the Child to be breastfed about the advantages of breastfeeding. The Convention stresses that breastfeeding is not the sole responsibility of the mother but a shared responsibility, that is the focus of the celebration. It's actually not easy. That six months is a long time, you know, for a baby to be on a breast. From my experience that immediately after giving birth, you tend to have a kind of abdominal pain. And the moment you put your baby to breast, you notice that the cramp may increase and you find out that the blood flow will be easy. So, the rate of children exclusively breastfed for six months have increased from 17 to 29 percent. The Minister of Health represented said it is still below 50 percent of 2025 targets. It's important then for us to um, further advance the argument that breastfeeding is the best. To achieve this target, the federal government at the celebration launched a national guideline 
on baby initiative in Nigeria for the survival of children and promotion of exclusive breastfeeding beyond two years. Basi Taiba, NTA News. To other matters, pensioners in the country under the ages of Nigeria Union of Pensioners have appreciated and commended President Muhammad Buhari for payment of major part of the backlog entitlements. The pensioners describe President Buhari as a leader who listens to the yearnings and aspirations of his subjects, noting that this was evidenced by the deliberate efforts being put in place by the government to put smiles on the faces of its members. Through the Pension Transitional Arrangement, Arrangement Directorate, federal government has commenced payment of pensioners nationwide by the initial release of 12 months in June and another payment of six months in July, leaving the balance of six months pending. Nigerians have been urged to always work together towards evolving sustainable development of the nation. Some key players in the creative industry made the plea at the launch of some literary works in Abuja. Delia Tumbi reports. The literary works reflect the social, political, and economic development of the nation. The author of the books, who is a legal practitioner, Amino Kayo de Alilu, said his foray to the literary world was to give back to the society what it has garnered over the years. He admonished the people to always contribute their quota to national development. Like I said in my wise man's scripture, getting to the promised land with indolence is as impossible as getting to the moon with a bicycle. Unveiling the literary works, the Olu of Iwo Oba Abdul Rashid Akombi commended President Muhammadu Buhari's fight against corruption. He canvassed the need for the people to support the anti corruption drive of the present administration for a better society. More so, I commend the President Buhari led administration for creating a vigorous awareness against corruption. We want more from His Excellency, and enforcement of capital punishment for corrupt officials is enough to place Nigeria at the verge of developed nations. We have all journeyed with the author through the, the finely crafted scenes of arrows in the shadows, which eulogizes, celebrates, and preserves the rich culture of Africa. The books are pointed to the symbiotic relationship between the government and the governed. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. As part of efforts by the federal government to combat the spread of fake news, hate speech, and cyber-related crimes in the country, the National Orientation Agency and partners have commenced a nationwide training of 37,000 fact-checkers selected from the 36 states of the Federation and the FCT. Kenneth Nanin reports. Spread of fake news, hate speech, and other unverifiable information and their attendant consequences have posed great concern to the global community. The Nigerian government is not well, relenting as well in curbing this ugly trend to further strengthen campaign against spread of misguided information and utterances, especially through the social media platforms. The National Orientation Agency selected 1,000 persons of diverse backgrounds from the 36 states of the Federation and the FCT to equip them with requisite modern skills and knowledge for fast checking, of which some of them in the remote areas are participating virtually. The Director General of National Orientation Agency and other stakeholders put in perspective the essence of the three-day course. The moment a misinformation or a fake news goes out, clarification that usually follows, do not travel as fast as what has originally been sent out. And this is why we insist that we have to take measures to prevent the dissemination of fake news. We have seen what rumor mongering, lies, distortions can do. So it's important that whatever we do, we check and cross-check the facts. We of Radio Nigeria, Voice of Nigeria, NTA, use us as a yardstick to cross-check facts. And by the time almost 37,000 Nigerians are empowered with skills to fact-check claims, we believe we would have been able to minimize, to a large extent, the problem of insecurity. As part of five-year strategic work plan, the agency says it will ensure that knowledge gained is put into practice 
and the information gatekeeping processes to ensure that the Nigeria project is realized. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. And for facts and clarity on the Olympic Games medal table, Niger's blessing Oboro Dudu actually won silver medal in the 68 kg wrestling women category as transmitted earlier on NTA network service. This is the first time Niger is winning an Olympic medal in the event. Niger now has two medals, a silver and a bronze won by S.A. Brome in long jump. This is Nationwide on NCA. Time to join Adiola in Lagos for more reports. Hello, Adiola. Hello, Elizabeth. Now, with more than 40 deaths recorded in the wake of third wave of COVID-19 pandemic in Lagos, Governor Babajide Sonwolu says efforts have been intensified to scale up vaccination and enhance surveillance at entry points into the state. Musa Tolliant has details. Governor Babajide Sonwolu attributed the fatalities recorded to the low-level second round of COVID-19 vaccination put at just 1%. He stressed that more stringent measures are being put in place to check inbound passengers and track those who escaped from being tested at the airport. We will continue to employ all our inbound passengers arriving into Lagos to endeavor to provide valid contacts details to the authorities so that they can all be properly monitored. Um, to manage the third wave of this pandemic, the equity element will continue to focus on monitoring and tracking inbound passengers and cases in our various communities. The governor, who hinted that the state is expecting a sizable amount of Moderna COVID-19 vaccine from the 4 million recently delivered in Abuja, advised residents who took AstraZeneca vaccine as first dose not to take Moderna vaccine as second dose when the state rolls out the vaccine soon. There's a sticker on your card, so we will know when you come that, you know, you've, you've taken AstraZeneca Right, and so you cannot come and take, you know, a Moderna as your second dose. So that's what we're also communicating, you know, through you, gentlemen of the press, to say that once the vaccine comes in, people that are taking the first dose should still exercise a bit more patience and wait for the AstraZeneca vaccines to come. Governor Sanwolu also warned that non-pharmaceutical protocols are still being enforced and anyone caught violating the protocols in public places will be prosecuted. In Lagos, Musa Toliad. NTA News. And to other reports, Nigerian economy has maintained a steady but slight growth trajectory in several quarters of each financial year. This impact is on the backdrop of financial reforms and policies initiated by the federal government to drive economic recovery and development. While these economic reforms are all inclusive, how effective are they in tackling money laundering headlong and strengthening economic stability? Alpoladi Salami will tell us in this report. For a long time in Nigeria, money laundering has been a canker worm threatening economic growth and dragging the wheel of development backward. While the fight has been fought with lip service in previous years, a different approach was adopted by the present administration to empower the special money laundering units of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to nip in the board the alarming scourge of illegal money transactions. And as we know, money laundering is a dynamic crime. As such, they have found or think they have found a new area of the economy, such as the DNFIs. With us here, what we are doing is making sure we create a firewall and not letting them come through. With the negative economic impact on the mining the integrity of financial system, loss of control of economic policy, economic distortion and instability, as well as loss of revenue, the Nigerian states suffered a huge loss to foreign portfolio investments. At some point, there was almost a financial parade where the global community was not willing to do financial transactions involving Nigerians because they felt that a lot of illegal transactions were flowing out of Nigeria or were passing through Nigeria. There were no legal systems to track them and get punished offenders. So, with EFCC, with the Money Lending Act, we've seen a burnishing of our reputation, principally because we've gone a lot, long way to clean up. Uh, issues of financial fraud in the system. It is hoped that the adoption of technology by government agencies in response to the sophisticated nature of financial crime will go a long way in winning the war against the graph in the shortest possible time. 
in Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. And that's it from Lagos, but Suleiman in Kaduna will be giving the next set of reports when we return from this break. Do stay with us. Studio. Moving on now, the federal government is determined to support states towards improving service delivery through technological innovations. Minister of Communications and Digital Economy Isa Al Pantami stated this while declaring open a two-day capacity building program on e-governance and digital transformation for members of Kano State Executive Council. Abdullah Mustafa has the report. The e-governance and digital transformation capacity building training aims to motivate Kano State Executives towards embracing ICT as an enabler of productivity and performance. It demonstrates to them how to initiate the development and implementation of statewide e-governance strategy by preparing their mindsets on the potentials and possibilities of ICT for socio-economic growth in the 21st century. Minister of Communication and Digital Economy Isa Alipantami, who announced the donation of 110 units of computers to Kano State Government, expressed confidence in the ability of the state to take lead in digital transformation. Looking at the institutions we have in Kano and the leadership being provided by His Excellency the Governor, there are many reasons to justify why we begin the program in Kano. Government has, in collaboration with the Nigerian Communication Commission, installed VSAT for e-recording and e-consultation at our Tambata General Hospital. On education, we distributed a total of 3,500 computers to our public tertiary institutions. Governor Ganduji restated the commitment of his administration towards effective management of Kanu digital transformation projects. In Kanu, Abdullahi Mustafa, NTA News. Jigao State Government, in collaboration with an international volunteer group, is conducting eye surgeries on more than 700 cataract uh, patients in the state. Awal Mohamed Kazori reports that the exercise also involves public awareness against the ailment. Cataract is a dance that covers the lens of the eye developing slowly and eventually interfering with the vision or leads to total blindness. Malang Ahmadu Zai is among the more than 700 cataract patients selected to benefit from this free eye surgery. I was among the beneficiaries. Before, I could not see your eyeballs with my eye, but now I can see you clearly. I can see very well. All friends be to God. My sight is back. He said the disease has affected his sight for more than 10 years, but could not afford the treatment. Thanking the intervention of the state government, organizers of the exercise expressed concern on the high prevalence of cataract, especially among the people as those in rural areas. And, uh, actually, uh, our Muslim World League, we are interested more in uh, help uh, uh, privileged people in Nigeria and uh, other countries. Though our target was uh, to operate on 700 patients, but inshallah we see what we can do to ensure the excess also will be covered by our team, inshallah. The treated patients receive packages of free drugs and eyeglasses, courtesy of Jiga State Government and the volunteers. From Duse A, Awal Muhammad Kazouri, NTA News. And with that, it's back to Elizabeth in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Elizabeth with that, in Abuja for more. Thank you, Suleiman. Now to security. The Imo State Police Command has arrested one Imal Naji, an alleged IPUB member from all local government area. A statement by the police public relations officer Malka Abantam indicates that on interrogation, the suspect gave useful information on the location of a hotel in all local government area used by members of the group for criminal activities, including attacks on police stations as well as the beheading of a young man. Subsequently, 26 suspects have been arrested, of which seven are females. Other items, including one AK-47 rifle, five pump action rifles, four double barrel locally made pistols, eight light cartridges, a signboard, among other items, were recovered. 
Meanwhile, condemning the cases of violence in Olu, the PPRO noted the arrest of one Boniface Okeke, aged 57, who was allegedly linked to terrorism, financing of IPOB activities while he was outside the country. He says investigations are ongoing as the suspects are still under interrogation. Meanwhile, the Inspector General of Police, IGP Usman Al-Khali Baba, has approved the posting of DCP Tsunji Disu as the new head of the Police Intelligence Response Team, IRT, with immediate effect. In a statement, the IGP charged the new head of the IRT to demonstrate professional competence in the leadership of the unit. The IGP also assured citizens that the IRT will remain focused in the discharge of its duties in line with national statutes and international best practices. Prior to his appointment, DCP Tunji Disu was the commander of the Rapid Response Court, Lagos State, Deputy Commissioner of Police, Department of Operations, Force Headquarters, Abuja, and former commander of the Nigeria Police Contingent to the African Union Peacekeeping Mission in Darfur. The Federal High Court Abuja Division has ordered the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to unfreeze the 2.1 billion naira bank account belonging to Dark Communications. The Chief Judge of the Federal High Court Justice John Soho gave the order this Tuesday in Abuja. Justice Soho held that the order became necessary since the appellate court's verdict invalidated the criminal charges against Raymond Dogbasi and the EFCC had not applied for stay of execution of the judgment. The court also ordered the commission to release all seized documents belonging to the applicants. Federal government has reiterated its commitment to reimbursing state governments that have intervened in executing federal road projects after undergoing rigorous assessments. Minister of Works and Housing, Babatin de Fashola, gave the assurance shortly after inspecting some federal road projects in some parts of Yobe State, which were executed by the state government. Minister Suleiman reports. The Minister of Works and Housing, Babatin de Fashola, was in the state on behalf of the federal government to inspect and assess the 273 kilometers federal government road projects executed by Yobe State Government for subsequent reimbursement. The roads inspected include Guru Machina 57 kilometers, Gashua Yusfari 30.5 kilometers, Dematru Bunyadi Magza 77 kilometers, as well as Kaliari Baimari Gaidem 109 kilometers respectively. The uh, standard pricing for materials and uh, also standard designs. We will file our report based on what we find. We, we have a method for making quantification. Then we will send it to the government uh, cost control center and uh, they will then advise government as to what is due and payable. The total quantum of money uh, for all the projects which we have already constructed uh, is about over 20 billion, which the Yobe state government is requesting for the fund. According to Fashola, already some state governments that have intervened in executing federal government roads were refunded last year by the Buhari led administration. The minister also inspected the ongoing special repairs of heavily flooded area in Guru Town, causing washout along Guru Machina Road where the Yobe State Controller of Works Engineer Olusegun Akimadi adequately briefed him on the progress of work done. In the matru, Yenusa Suleiman, NTA News. Let's head to Benin, where Agatha is standing by with some reports for us. Hello, Agatha. Hello, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining us in Benin. Resident doctors in Edo State have joined their counterparts in the nationwide indefinite strike following failure by the federal government to meet their demands. Ivio Yahiri has a situation report. Activities of doctors at the University of Benin Teaching Hospital were considerably reduced, but some doctors were seen moving around in anticipation that the industrial action would intensify. The hazard allowance to take care of myself if I get sick is 5,000 naira a month. For many of us who had COVID, we had to spend hundreds of thousands of naira to take care of ourselves. So we are talking about this Delta variant. This is part of the reasons why I want to strike. So it's unfair. These are the things we're asking for. Pay us our rights. 
Others believe if the strike lingers, it may have adverse effects on the health of the populace. They should attend to the, need, the health need of Nigerians at this moment. This is not the time to go on strike right now. We are hearing of the COVID-19 uprising and some other thing. Well, what benefit will it be to the nation for them to go on strike? The strike is coming 113 days after the last strike in April. In Benin, Ivye Uyahiri, NTA News. And still on health matters, Zedo State Governor Godwin Obaseki is making preparations in advance to tackle the Delta COVID-19 variant. The governor was on inspection of some of the state's health facilities, including the Stella Obasanjo Hospital, which houses one of the COVID-19 treatment and isolation centers in Benin City. Elizabeth Omoko has the report. Following the worrisome daily increase of the virus in the country, Governor Gordon Obasaki is here to check the readiness of the isolation facilities and the availability of oxygen in case events take a worse turn. The governor says the state is ready to take delivery of a share of the Modena COVID-19 vaccine. We need to undertake a thorough analysis and study of the situation and use the data and information which we are gathering to make the decisions we need to make. Um, and one of the decisions that we need to make will be the nature and preparedness of facilities to receive patients for treatment in case we find ourselves in the rather unfortunate situation where countries like India or Senegal is now finding itself. Governor Basaki was also at the state's nursing and midwifery schools to inspect the ongoing reconstruction and renovation work in the institution ahead of its reopening in September for learning. Recruitments have been done or are almost been completed for staff. So a lot of background work is going on beyond what you see. The accommodation for the first set of intakes, as you see, are, they are ready. The furnishing is being finalized. Necessary staffs, according to the governor, are on the way to ensure that everything needed for the smooth takeoff of the school next month is acquired. In Benin, Elizabeth Omako, NT News. This is Nationwide. After this break, Mina in Enugu will take on the next set of reports. Stay on. Very good evening to you and welcome to Enugu. Stop violence against women and girls, support gender equality, equity, and accountability were some of the messages of Gender and Constitution Reform Network, GCON, in partnership with Women Aid Collective, WACO, as they took to the streets of Enugu Metropolis. Chika Ugu reports that the rally featured various women from different civil societies in the Southeast. It was indeed a walk to end all forms of violence and discrimination against women and the girl child. The rally we took off from Opera Square saw the women through various major roads and streets in the metropolis, singing and dancing to drive home their message on the need for women to speak out against rape, harmful widowhood practices and all the forms of molestation meted on them. The essence of this work today is for us to call for an end to harmful traditional practices, harmful cultural practices, harmful widowhood practices, an end to child marriage, an end to rape, an end to domestic violence, an end to all forms of molestation against the women, the women in Nigeria and the girl child. And officer, all the harmful widowhood practices all the harmful cultural and traditional practices, cultural norms that, that is against women, that is against women's development. This inheritance of girl child, enough is there. Tired of all forms of maltreatment, these women say enough to discrimination and want women to be practically included in leadership positions and politics. The girl child is the woman being. Give her the opportunity and she will excel. Give woman the room and she will excel. The rally which ended at Namdi Azikiwe Stadium was an eye-opener to many, arousing their minds to the possibility of a society free from violence and abuse of human rights, particularly the female gender, as recognized in law and practice. In Enugu, Chika Ugu, NTA News. 
upgrading the nation's health system to meet global standards is a sure way of reversing the trend of Nigerians seeking medical services and jobs abroad. This was the view of some medical experts from the University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital, UNTH, Enugu, during an assessment tour of the Enugu State University Teaching Hospital and College of Medicine in Weno under construction courtesy of the state government. Susan Eze has details. Research has shown that Nigeria loses about $1.2 billion annually on medical tourism. In a bid to take healthcare delivery in Enugu State to a higher level in line with global best practices, the state government is deploying resources to provide top-notch medical facilities across the state. According to the State Commissioner for Works, the ESU Teaching Hospital and Medical School Ibuano Campus is being built to standard to compete with contemporaries elsewhere in the world. This hospital will not only provide services for the people of Enugu State, but for the neighboring states, and as a result, will decongest the existing hospital facilities in the West and in the East. Completing the assessment tour of the facilities, the medical team from UNTH, headed by the chief medical director, admitted that all facilities met WHO standards. The hospital went fully functional, he said, will no doubt help achieve the state government's goal of reducing the rate of medical trips abroad in search of health services. All these departments that are relevant to a proper hospital to function, they are all represented, they are all on ground. And truly we saw that the plan is modern. Everything as recommended by WHO is just amazing. So I'm impressed. The state commissioners for health and works and infrastructure led the medical experts on the assessment tour in Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. And that's the contribution from here. Nationwide continues with Elizabeth in Abuja. Thank you, Mina. President Muhammad Buhari congratulates the Syrian governor, Godwin Emefili, as he turns 60 today. The president appreciates the economist and banker for his patriotic service to the country at a time of stiff economic challenges, praying that his efforts will yield positive dividends for the generality of Nigerians to reap from. President Buhari wishes the Syrian governor good health and greater service to the fatherland. The Amendment Act Finance Act 2020 has recognized the Niger Postal Services as a statutory authority to produce and collect stamp duties in Nigeria. Abdurrahman Usman Jabrila reports that this is coming as the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy unveils the official Niger Post revenue stamp. This is the official unveiling of the Nye Post Revenue Stamp. The new Nye Post Transport and Logistics Company, Microfinance Bank, has some revenue sources on the way which the Minister of Communication says are efforts to upgrade the agency to world-class standards. In addition to that, we also have a plan of Nye Post Property and Development Company. This is a company that will bring together all the properties of NIPOS to develop them and make sure that government is generating revenue from them. The bill to rebuild the Nigeria Postal Service Act and reignite the Nigeria Postal Commission as pastor reading of both chambers. Through stamps, NIPOS has documented Nigeria's history, educating and preserving our national heritage, among others. With the unveiling of the revenue stamp, NIPOS is finally free from all forms of constraints to execute its mandate for better service delivery. In Abuja, Abraham Osmanjibrila, NTA News. A spate of measures to support the actualization of President Buhari's pledge that Nigeria will, within a 10-year period, plant 25 million trees to mitigate the effects of climate change to enhance the country's carbon sink. FCT Minister of State Bramatit Jani Aliu made this known at the flag off of distribution of tree seedlings to area councils, communities and schools in the FCT. Ifai Izumba reports from Koje Junior Secondary School, Abuja. 
in the minister's words, keeping our climate stable, absorbing carbon dioxide, releasing oxygen, providing food, medicines and habitation to biodiversity goes without saying that the health of our trees and forests, the health of our planet and our health, well-being and by implication our future are all dependent on our environment. FCT Minister of State Ramatuti Jani Ali also added that the best council chairman that leads the tree planting campaign in his community will be selected as the planter of the year. For all the Liberal Capital Territory, apart from these activities, the exponential rise in pollution, in population and other environmental activities over the years are perhaps the disregard for the planting of trees among residents and has also contributed to worsening the situation. Acting Secretary, Agriculture and Rural Development Secretary, Ibe Prospect Chukwemeka, maintains that the program demonstrates the commitment of the FCT administration towards achieving the global agenda of a secured and sustainable ecosystem by restoring forests and mitigating the adverse effects of global warming and other environmental hazards. Experts have warned that the phenomenon of global warming and other environmental challenges pose serious threats to the survival of life in the ecosystem. The general manager, NCH and Five Abuja, Fatima Abbas Hassan, while commending the FCT administration on the distribution of tree seedlings, calls for all hands to be on deck to deal with the issues of deforestation. We must be not only campaigners, but we must be advocates for the environment. Indeed, if we have a good environment, then we would have a better reason to leave. Let me assure you that the enlightenment and awareness that will be created today will be taken to villages, wards across. ECOWAS Parliament has resolved to engage stakeholders to implement, implement elimination of roaming and termination charges levied by some member states rising from its delocalized meeting in Ghana. Parliament also recommended improved telecommunication and information technology infrastructure to promote economic development and combat cyber crimes. On NGA Fine Face reports. Key outcomes of the ECOWAS Parliament Joint Committee meeting in Rueneba, Ghana include recommendations for the ECOWAS Commission to publish roaming tariff ceilings by regulatory agencies of member states, ensuring mobile operators in the region comply with ECOWAS regulations on roaming and ensuring that member states implement free regional roaming as approved by the Council of Ministers in December 2017. To assist member states on the domestication and transposition of community tax on TITs and specifically the directive on fighting against cybercrime, the supplementary act on electronic transactions and as well as the supplementary act on personal data protection within the ECOWAS region. Parliament on its part vowed to work with relevant stakeholders to address threats and risks facing global cyberspace and digital networks. These threats and risks are part and parcel of development and we as a parliament need to ensure that we support national cyber security and anti-cyber crime organizations, critical digital services and infrastructure, as well as regional mutual assistance and international cooperation. All interventions and recommendations from the Weneba meeting will be presented at plenary for further legislative action on Nguye Fine Face, NT News. 32 cases of the Delta variant of COVID-19 have so far been detected in five states in the country. Chairman of the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, at the national briefing in Abuja says the rising nationwide positivity ratio currently puts at 6% is worrisome. Mitari Ikmin reports. The Delta variant, which experts say is 60% more transmissible than other COVID-19 variants, is generating concern in the country. The Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 is particularly worried about the situation in Lagos, Aquaibom, Oyo, Rivers, and the FCT, where the Delta variant is said to be prevalent. Now, the biggest batch of uh, sequencing uh, that we got this morning was out of Aquaibom. 
So out of 23 cases there, 19 were the Delta variant. And that's why I said 80% of the cases in Aquaibom today turned out to be Delta. So that is likely, uh, that is the most likely cause of the increased transmission we're seeing suddenly. This development calls for great caution because the virus is very virulent. We must therefore keep observing the non-pharmaceutical interventions and also ensure that we get vaccinated. We are also considering strategies to scale up testing and to identify cases for isolation and treatment. Diplomatic measures are also being taken to prevent further importation of the virulent Delta variant. For non-restricted uh, countries, um, the diplomats uh, are coming from those countries um, just have to have that um, uh, 74, uh, 72 hours uh, prior uh, a PCR uh, a test, and then within seven days uh, do a test in any accredited uh, private uh, laboratory. The PSC advises Nigerians to avoid non-essential travels and comply with all COVID-19 protocols to contain the virus. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikben, NTA News. To tertiary education now, heads of tertiary institutions in Nigeria have been advised to look inwards with regards to the academic staff training and development for proper fund management. Chairman of Ted Fund Board of Trustees, Kashimi Brian Lehman, said this during an interactive session and reconciliation of records, records with beneficiaries of the intervention program in Asaba. Oye Joshua, Ifine reports. With about 236 institutions of higher learning in Nigeria, the federal government has earmarked over 300 billion naira for the training of lecturers in each university. Um, more than 30,000 lecturers have been trained at master's and PhD levels across Nigeria. Um, this is remarkable by every criteria, whatever yardstick that is utilized. Director, Academic Staff Training and Development, Mohamed Sani Suleiman, said the visit is also to reconcile records with beneficiaries and interact with returnee scholars to share their experiences. Some of the returnees who had their PhD or master's programs abroad, while commending government effort, expressed some reservations. We wrote the commission, sir, and uh, we asked her, uh, it was tagged as strangers' comments. The visit continues to other institutions. In Asaba, Onyinye, Joshua Ifai, NTA News. The federal government is fulfilling its international obligation towards the protection of human rights of Nigerians without fear or favor, in line with Pari principles. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami Hussein, made this known during the inauguration of the fifth members of the Governing Council of the National Human Rights Commission in Abuja. Omenka Amarachuku completes the story. For over four years, the National Human Rights Commission has been without a governing council as the last council was dissolved in 2016. In March 2021, President Muhammad Upuari appointed 15 council members who are expected to help in promoting the human rights of Nigerians. The Attorney General Federation and Minister of Justice, Abaka Malami, while inaugurating the council members, call on them to live up to expectation. The government amended the National Human Rights Commission Act in 2010 for its operational independence by entrenching the tenure of members and ensuring adequate funding and effectiveness of the commission. For the Executive Secretary of the Commission, Tony Juku, despite many challenges faced, the commission has lived up to its mandate. The Commission has operationalized the Human Rights Training Institute. Chairperson of the Governing Council, Salamatu Hassani Sulema, promised a resort-driven approach. And we pledge that we will put all hands on deck. We certainly would want to carry the media along. Let them know what is happening. Let them help us bring out issues of human rights violations. If this is the expectation of Nigerians and other stakeholders, that the new council members will further strengthen the programs and activities of the commission in Abuja, Umeka, Marachuku, NTA News. 
In Omen Cash Report ends nationwide today. Thank you so much for your time. Don't forget to take action. Stand against rape and rapist. Good evening. Thank you.